Good day. Today, we are about to discuss what happened in Cavite Mutiny. This is case study number two as part of controversies and conflicting views in Philippine history. So we are going to study and analyze the different primary sources that mention the events during the Cavite Mutiny of 1872. The year 1872 is a historic year of two events. First, it is known for the Cavite Mutiny, and second, the martyrdom of the three priests Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, later immortalized as the Gombursa. These events are important milestones in Philippine history and gave cause ripples throughout time. Directly, it influenced the decisive events of the Philippine Revolution towards the end of the century. While the significance is unquestioned, what made this year controversial are the different sides of the story. It is a battle between the perspective supported by primary sources. In this study, or in this case study, we zoom into the events of the Cavite Mutiny as a major factor in awakening the nationalism of the Filipinos during that time. So it, it made significance and um, controversial because this event it is um, a battle of perspective between the Spanish account and the Filipino scholars account. So let us have first the Spanish account of the Cavite Mutiny. So in the picture, we can see Spanish historian Jose Montero y Vidal. This documentation of the Spanish historian Jose Montero y Vidal centered on how the event was an attempt in overthrowing the Spanish government in the Philippines. Although it is regarded as a historian, his account of mutiny was being criticized and woefully biased and rabid for a scholar. The second account is from the official report written by the Governor General Rafael Izquierdo that implicate the native clergy who were then active in the movement towards secular secularization of parishes. Montero and Izquierdo's account corroborated each other. Now, let us see the different scholars who utilize the account of Montero during the Cavite Mutiny. Um, the primary source is the account of Jose Montero y Vidal uh, entitled The Spanish Version of the Cavite Mutiny of 1872, which utilized by Gregorio Saide and Sonia Saide for the Documentary Sources of Philippine History, Volume 7, page 269 to 273. So in this account, it is said that the abolition of the privileges enjoyed by the laborers of the Cavite Arsenal of exemption from the tribute was, according to some, the cause of the insurrection. There, wa there were, however, other causes. But the main cause of the insurrection that happens prior to the Cavite Mutiny was the abolition of, pri of privileges that being enjoyed by the laborers of the Cavite Arsenal. Also, 
the Spanish Revolution, which overthrew, overthrew a circular throne, the propaganda carried by carried on by an un, unbridled press against monarchical principles, Attenta, attentatory of the most sacred respects towards the dethroned majesty, the outburst of the American publicists, and the criminal policy of the senseless governor whom the revolutionary government sent to govern the Philippines, sent to govern the Philippines and who put into practice these ideas were determining circumstances which gave rise among certain Filipinos to the idea of attaining their independence. It was toward this goal that they started to work with the powerful assistance of a certain section of the native clergy who put out of the spike towards the priors, made common cause with the enemies of the mother country. In continuation, at various times, but especially in the beginning of the year 1872, the authorities received anonymous communications with the information that a great uprising would break out against the Spaniards. The minute the fleet at the Cavite left for the south and that all would be assassinated, including the priors, but nobody gave importance to these notices. The conspiracy had been going on since the days of La Torre with utmost secrecy. At times, the principal leaders met either in the house of Filipino, Filipino Spaniard Dr. Joaquin Pardo de Tavera or in the native priest Jacinto Zamora and these meetings were usually attended by the curate of Bacoor, the soul of the movement whose energetic character and immense wealth enabled him to exercise a strong influence. In the account, it is stated that the leaders of the insurrection or the movement in the Cavite Arsenal was uh, met either in the house of Dr. Jose Pardo de Tavera or in the house of the native priest Jacinto Zamora. Primary source number two. This is an ex um, excerpts from the official report of the Governor General Izquierdo on the Cavite Mutiny of 1872. Again, um, it was being utilized by Gregorio Saide and Sonia Saide for the Documentary Sources of the Philippine History, page 287 to 286, volume 7. According to the account or the report of the Governor General Izquierdo, it seems definite that the insurrection was motivated and prepared by the native clergy, by the mestizos and native lawyers, and by no by those known here as abogadillos. So, on the report of Ge Governor General Izquierdo, he had mentioned that the insurrection was being led and motivated by some of the native clergies, the mestizos, and even the native lawyers uh, in the uh, place in Cavite. Continuation, the instigators to carry out their criminal project protected against the injustice of the government in not paying the, the provinces for their tobacco crop and against the usury that some practice in the documents that had that the finance or finance department gives crops over owners who must sell them at a loss. They encouraged the rebellion by protesting what they called the injustice of having obliged the workers in the Cavite Arsenal 
to pay tribute starting January 1 and to render personal services from which they were formerly exempted. Up to now, it has not been clearly determined if they plan to establish a monarchy or a republic. Because the Indios have no word in their language to describe this different form of government, whose head in Filipino would be called Hari. In the report of Izquierdo, it's either uh, the insurrection is determined to plan to establish a monarchy or a republic. But then again, uh, he he does not know or the earlier the earliest Filipino or what they called Indios uh, have no word word in their language to describe the different form of government. But uh, the leader of or the head of the Filipino would be called Hari. But it turns out that they could, they would place at the head of the government a frieze that the head of the selected would be Dr. Jose Burgos, Jacinto Zamora, such is the plan of the rebels, those who guided them, and the means counted upon the realization. It was mentioned also in the report of uh, General Governor General Izquierdo that the plan to establish a monarchical or republic uh, government would be led. It's either uh, would be led by a priest. It's either of uh, between Jose Burgos and Jacinto Zamora. In the Spanish account of the Cavite Mutiny, it is remarkable that it is the apparent that the accounts undercore, underscores the reason for the revolution. First, the abolition of the privileges enjoyed by the workers of the Cavite Arsenal, such as exemption from payments and tributes, tribute and being employed in polo, a servicio, or forced labor. Second, the Spanish account also identified other reasons which seemingly made the issue a lot more serious, which included the presence of the native clergy, who's out of spite against the Spaniards' priors, conspired and supported by the rebels. And lastly, Izquierdo, in obviously ban biased report, he highlighted that the attempt of uh, to the attempt to overthrow the Spanish government in the Philippines to install a new Hari in the persons of the fathers Burgos and Zamora. Also, uh, they have mentioned in the Spanish account that the events during 1872 was pre-May dictated and was part of a big conspiracy among the educated leaders, mestizos, lawyers, and residents of Manila's and Cavite. They allegedly planned to liquidate high-ranking Spanish officials and kill the priors. They have also given uh, a detailed or at the account detail that on January 20, 1872, the district of Sampalo celebrated the Feast of the Virgin of Loreto and came with it where some fireworks display. The Capitanios allegedly mistook this as a signal to commence with the attack. The 200 men contingent led by the Sergeant La Madrid attack the Spaniards or the Spanish officers at sight and seize the arsenal. The Governor General Izquierdo, upon knowing the attack, he ordered the reinforcement of the Spanish 
forces in the Cavite to quell the revolt. The revolution was easily crushed when the Manilenos, who were expected to aid the Caviteños, did not arrive. Leaders of the plot were killed in the resulting skirmish, while Father Gomez, Zamora, and Burgos were trialed by court martial and sentenced to be executed. Others who were implicated, such as Dr. Joaquin de Tabera, Antonio Maria Rejedor, and Pio Basa, and other Filipino lawyers who were suspended from the practice of law, they were arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment at the Marianas Islands. Governor General Rafael Izquierdo dissolved the native regiments of artillery and ordered the creation, the creation of, of an artillery force composed exclusively by the Peninsulares. On February 17, 1872, the Gumburza were executed to serve as a threat to Filipinos to never attempt to fight the Spaniards again. So now let us take a look into the response of the injustice, the Filipino version of the incident. On the picture, we can see the uh, photo or Dr. Trinidad de Tabera. He is a Filipino scholar and a researcher who wrote the Filipino version of the Cavite Mutiny or the Cavite, um, the incident of Cavite. There were two other primary accounts exist that seem to be countered, counter to the accounts of Izquierdo and Montero. Primary source number three, excerpts from Pardo de Tabera, account of the Cavite Mutiny. Again, it was this account was being utilized by Gregorio and Soida Saide for the documentary sources of the Philippines Philippine History, Volume 7, page 274 to 280. According to this, the, uh, the uprising among soldiers in Cavite was sued as a powerful level by the Spanish residents and the priors. The central government in Madrid had announced its intention to deprive the priors in these islands of powers of intervention in matters of civil government and of the direction and management of the university. It was due to these facts and promises that the Filipinos had great hopes of an improvement in the priors in the improvement in the affairs of their country, while priors and other hand, on the other hand feared that their power in the colony would be soon be completed. Up to the time there had been no intention of succession from Spain and the only aspiration of the Filipino was to secure the material and education advancement of the country. According to this account, the incident was merely a mutiny by the Filipino soldiers and laborers of the Cavite arsenal to the dissatisfaction arising from the Dacronian policies of Izquierdo, such as the abolition of privileges and the provision of the founding of the School of Arts and Trades for Filipinos, which the general saw a smoke screen to creating political club. 
Tabera in is of the opinion that the Spanish priors and Izquierdo used the Cabite Mutiny as a way to address the issues by blowing up, blowing out of proportion the isolated mutiny attempt. During this time, the central government in Madrid was planning to de deprive the priors of all the powers of intervention in matters of civil government and direction and management of educational institution. The priors needed something to justify their continuing dominance in the country, and the mutiny provided such opportunity. However, the central government introduced an educational decree fusing the sectarian schools by the priors into the school called the Philippine Institute. The decree aimed to improve the standard of the education in the Philippines by requiring teaching position in, this, in these schools to be filled by competitive examination and improvement welcomed by most Filipinos. Another account was made by a French writer, Edmond Plachut. The account of Edmond Plachut and Tabera was complemented and analyzed the motivation of the 1872 Cavite and Butini. Again, uh, as an event happens or occur, there was uh, two sides of the stories. Uh, the first we have discussed was the side of the Spaniards or their accounts or report uh, on the Cavite Mutiny. While uh, this part of our lesson, the Tabera and Plasut account, is the Filipino version of the incident. Um, they were uh, complemented each other and analyze the motivation of the Cavite Mutiny of 1872. According to this, this was an excerpt from Plasut account of the Cavite Mutiny. Again, it was utilized by Gregorio Saide and Sonia Saide for the documentary sources of the Philippines, Volume 7, page 251 to 268. According to this, the General La Torre created a junta composed a high official, officials including some priors and six Spanish officials at the time there was created by the government in Madrid. A committee to investigate the, sa the same problems submitted to the Manila Committee. When the two finished work, it was found that they came to be the same conclusion. First, the arrival in Manila of the General Izquierdo put a sudden end to all dreams and reforms. The prosecutions instituted by the new Governor General were probably expected as a result of a bitter disputes between the Filipino clerics and the friars. Such a policy must, re must really end in a strong desire on the part of the other depressed cruelty. Second, in regard to the schools, it was previously decreed that there or that there should be in Manila a, a, a society of arts and trades to be opened in March 1871. Due to res repress the growth of liberal teaching, the Governor General Izquierdo suspended the opening of the schools the day before the schedule of the inauguration. The Filipinos had a duty to render service in public roads every year, but those who were employed at the maestranza of the artillery in the engineering shops and arsenals of Cavite were exempted from this obligation from the immemorial Without preliminaries of any kind, a decree by the governor withdrew 
from such old employees their retirement privileges and declassified them into the ranks of those who work to public roads. Lastly, the priors use incident as a part of a larger conspiracy to cement or to cement their dominance, which had started to show cracks between all the discontent of the Filipinos. They showcase the mutiny as part of the greater conspiracy in the Philippines by the Filipinos to overthrow the Spanish government unintentionally and more so propitically, the Cavite mutiny of 1872 resulted in the martyrdom of Gumbursa and paved way to the revolution culminating in 1898. So it is concluded that the foundation of the Philippine Revolution of 1898 was uh, the Cavite mutiny of 1872 and the, the martyrdom of Gumbursa at the same year. So now, let us uh, revisit uh, our knowledge about the Gumbursa since they played an important role in this particular year as one of the historic events that happens in the year 1872. The Gumbursa is a collective name of the three martyred priests Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, who were tagged as the masterminds of the Cavite Mutiny of 1872. They were prominent Filipino priests charged with treason and sedition. It is believed that the Spanish clergy connected the priests to the mutiny as part of a conspiracy to stifle the movement of the secular priests who desired to have their own parishes instead of being merely assistants to the regular priors. The Gumbursa were executed by Garote in public, a scene purportedly witnessed by the young Jose Rizal. Their, martyr, their martyrdom is widely accepted as the dawn of the Philippine nationalism in the 19th century, with Rizal dedicating his second novel, El Filibusterismo, to their memory. The government According to uh, Jose Rizal, he had mentioned the government by enshrouding your trial in mystery and pardoning your co-accused has suggested that some mistake would committed when, you fate, when your fate was decided. And the whole of the Philippines in paying homage to the memory and calling your you martyrs totally rejects your guilt the church, by refusing to degrade you, has put in doubt the crime charged against you. So that is a statement came from our national hero, Dr. Sarisal, in accordance to the memory of the martyrdom of the Gumbursa. Again, thank you so much for listening. This has been your instructor.